Hey guys, I am back with an update for my goat shed that is being turned into our winter chicken coop. More specifically, I am copying the Carolina coop. I am officially Fran, so let's get right into the updates. The first thing that I did was covered the front with a metal siding that I found here on the property. Um, there's a lot of scraps and stuff left over, so I decided to use it, but it wasn't enough to do the whole thing. After that, I decided to get up on the roof because it was a nice day that day and clean everything off, all of the branches. I then took a broom, swept everything down and looked for nail holes. And there was one nail hole up there out of all of that, just one. So I bought a small thing of this gear, a Gorilla Glue waterproof patch and I covered the one hole, but then I also covered around all of the nail holes that were up there that were attaching the roof. And I was rolling around in that roof and moving around, so it was really nice and solid, while OSHA and my safety crew down there on the ground, you know, monitored my progress for some reason. They thought that they had to be there. Look at them looking for me. It was so funny when I reviewed this back to see them back and forth looking for me. And so here's a look at the patching that I did across all of the um, nail holes that were up there. Nice and clean and tidy because we do plan on um, painting this roof. So that way um, when we're ready to paint it, that part will be done. The next thing that I did was to start to attach the T111 siding to the sides and back of the shed. So I ended up cutting those um, panels down to seven feet. And once I got those cut down, it was really simple to just go on and attach them. And so that's what I did. Now I only had to use three sheets on the side of this. Once I cut the first sheet and put it up and measured it, I knew that I had the space. So the next um, two sheets, I cut them at once, which left me a small space on the end, which is I don't know, maybe three or four inches that I went back and took care of later. Um, and all I did was try to stand the sheets up next to each other, kind of as straight as possible, and then just simply attach them with some nails. Voila, we got the side on, we got the back on, and the next thing that I needed to do was to tackle cutting out the hole for the back. Um, I thought that attaching the board first and then cutting the hole out would be better for me. It was very hard. I went through the circular saw, the sawzall, everything trying to find a way to cut this out, but I thought that this would be the best way based on the way that the building was. And so I went on the inside and framed out where I was gonna be cutting. Because my building is leaning, this was like the best way for me to get that opening cut the way that I wanted. And remember, I had to cut through that wood as well as the shingles that were covering it, the paper that I put on, and then the T111 that I put on. But I was able to get it all cut out and I was happy with the results. It was much easier for me this way than trying to cut it out and then measure to put the boards back. So the next thing that I did, because I needed to um, figure out where I was going next, so I picked something easy. I took the door back off the front and I repainted it with um, some brown spray paint. The first paint that I used was this brown hammered and I didn't like the way it looked. So I wanted to keep moving and keep working. So this was like the easiest next job to do. Once that's all painted, I ended up putting the door back, but I have to go and find the replacement panels for the top and the bottom of it. But I figured it was nice outside, good time to get some something easy done, and that was like the easiest thing that I could think of at the time. And that is my whole cutout for the back. Everywhere that it was uneven, I just gave it like an extra inch, and then I went back and simply put my um, two by fours around it to hide all of my mistakes. But each piece that I cut off, I then made a frame for that piece to go back up. When I made those frames, I used my um, Craig jig set and made pocket holes and I squared everything up, um, clamped it all down, 
And then once I put the frame together, I put the piece of siding that I originally cut off. When I cut the big opening right back over it, that siding gave me the template for what I needed. And it basically stopped me with a lot of the measuring. I still had to measure, but again, I'm measuring crooked and uneven and lopsided. And so I was able to fake it out and make it look straight um, to the eye by doing it this way. So I'm real happy with the way that it came out. And anything that was uneven, I was able to use my multi-tool or other tools to sand them in place. And as you can see, those are my doors and there is my clean out door. And I have a little bit of the hardware attached. And so as you can see, I got one door up, I got my clean out um, door up and I just have to put the other one on. And it took a lot of tweaking and back and forth and in that because I made a lot of mistakes in between but my panels and everything were basically already cut. I even attached some hardware cloth to the inside because I needed to figure out how to make that other door. And once I did all of that, then it became clear what I needed to do. So all I had to do was go back and now tweak the door. So follow me over to the next video, Coop Build 3, where you can see how this all turned out and the other progress that I made on this project. Thanks for watching Fran and Officially Fran. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you can keep up with me while I keep up with you. Bye, guys.